In this video, we'll find the sine and cosine of 30 degrees or pi over 6 if we're working in radians. All right, to accomplish this, let's start by putting a 30 degree angle in standard position in a unit circle. So the radius must be 1. And by definition, the sine and cosine of 30 degrees represent the coordinates of this point that I'll label P. So by definition, cosine of 30 degrees must be the x-coordinate of point P and sine of 30 degrees must be the y-coordinate of point P. All right, well, due to how we read the coordinate plane, we know that if the x-coordinate is cosine of 30 degrees, this horizontal distance along the x-axis that takes us to point P must be of length 30 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees. And similarly, since sine of 30 degrees is the vertical coordinate of point P, the distance here between point P and the x-axis uh, must be in the vertical direction, must be sine of 30 degrees, all right? And due to how we read the coordinate plane and how that coordinate axes are aligned perpendicular to, to each other with a 90 degree angle between them, the angle between the pink line and the red line must also be 90 degrees. And we often represent that with a little box just like that. So uh, kind of stepping back and looking at the picture we've drawn, um, we can see that we've created a right triangle. A right triangle is a triangle with a 90 degree angle in it. And we have a little right triangle in there with a 30 degree angle. And it turns out if we focus on that right triangle, we can find the lengths of the red and green sticks. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is kind of zoom in here and grab that right triangle, take a copy of it and paste it. Um, elsewhere here in our document so we can just focus on that right triangle. I've lost a bit of our labeling so I'll come come in here and uh, recover that this angle here is 30 degrees. All right so um, one of the things that we want to figure out here is the measure of this angle, the other angle in the triangle and a a uh, fact about triangles is that the sum of all the angles in a triangle always is 180 degrees. So if we add 30 degrees, the uh, measure of this angle here, plus 90 degrees, the measure of that right angle, and we add it to the missing angle right here, I'll leave a little blank for, we know we should add up to 180 degrees, because that's just a fact about triangles. All right, well, kind of just spend a second looking at this little scenario. We realize that these two angles, 90 plus 30, will add up to 120, and 120 plus 60 will give us our 180 degrees. So this missing angle must be 60 degrees. So this is a famous 30, 60, 90 triangle. And it turns out we can find all of the values, the missing pieces, the pink sticks length and the red sticks length without a whole lot of effort. Um, although we do have to do a few things here. Um, what I'll start by doing is uh, taking this same triangle we've just constructed and uh, copying it and flipping it over and kind of attaching it to itself. Uh, it's kind of an odd thing to describe, but let me just go ahead and uh, grab onto this uh, 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 triangle here. So I'll like, grab onto it and I'll copy it and then I'll paste it here. Kind of left our territory. And then what I'm going to do is use the uh, editing tool in the software and just flip it over. So it's the exact same triangle but just flipped over. And then I can kind of drag it down here and put it into a position right where the other one is. So the, tr the two uh, red sticks are overlapping. Whoops. Two red strip sticks overlap one another. And what we end up with is one uh, larger triangle. So kind of imagine erasing the red stick in the middle of it, and you just end up with one bigger triangle. And in fact, 
what we're going to want to do is focus on that exact bigger triangle, but let's pay attention to some of its measurements. Well, since all we did was copy the top triangle to create sort of the bottom triangle, this angle here must be 30 degrees, and this angle here must be 60 degrees. And so now if, all, if we kind of step back and just look at kind of the bigger triangle and kind of erase the uh, red stick in there, we'll just have this triangle that follows these outside lines here. What I'll do now is go ahead and copy that and make another uh, uh, version of this triangle. I think the easiest way for me to do that will be to you know, come in here and steal it from my files. So take another version of that triangle. It's a little bit screwed up because I've erased the red line and some of the some portions of the triangle are now missing, but um, you can probably get the idea. Okay. So we have just this bigger triangle. Well, the label, the angle that's not labeled, the one right in here, comes from the original 30 degree angle plus a copy of that 30 degree angle. So this big angle here is just 30 plus 30 or 60. So it turns out that this larger triangle has three angles that all uh, have measures 60 degrees. So it's an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangles have uh, equal angles and equal sides, and since both of these two sides are one, the last side, missing side, must also be one unit long, and that big pink side must be one unit long. Well, returning back to our original kind of scenario, kind of looping back around over to here, um, remember that the 60 degree angle, the this one here, I'll make orange here for a second just to exaggerate it. That 60 degree angle came from two 30 degree angles added up, right? So um, we had we had kind of had, had that 60 degree angle cut in half with this red line. If I draw it here, we'd recognize that the top and the bottom of that 60 degree angle are now broken into two halves of 30 and 30, which must mean then that the uh, one unit here that uh, forms this, uh, that, that one unit length uh, value, I'll move it out there so I can label the top and the bottom halves. The top half and the bottom half must equal each, each be one half unit long so they can add up to become the entire one unit length, okay? So now if we, one last time, focus on that original triangle, right? This original triangle here that I've got circled in gray. If we focus on that one more time over here and kind of contemplate what, what we know and what we don't. In this triangle here, we're familiar with the fact that this angle is 30 degrees, right? And oops, 30 degrees. And we've just discovered that this pink stick here is one half of a unit long. Well, to find the length of the red stick, let's give it a name, call it A, just to have some kind of symbol there to describe it. And uh, what we have is a right triangle, and we know two of the three side lengths. So can, we can use what's known as Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side length of this right triangle. Pythagorean theorem tells us that the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides equals the square of the longer side. Kind of writing that out in symbols here, that, must, that tells us that A squared, the sum of the red stick, plus one half squared, the square of the pink stick, must equal the square of the longer purple stick, the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And we can use this little equation here to solve for a. So um, this means that a squared plus one half squared is one fourth, which equals one squared is one. Subtracting one fourth from both sides gives us three fourths. Taking the square root of both sides, we take the square root of a squared, we get a. And we take the square root of three fourths, we'll just get the square root of three fourths. Note that we don't bother with that plus minus option that you may recall from previous math classes, because in this case, A is representing the length of this stick on a, on a triangle, and uh, lengths are always positive. So we don't have to worry about the plus minus options. All right, so let's take the square root of the top, which is three. 
square root of the bottom, square root of 4 is 2. So we discovered that the length of that red stick is root 3, root 3 divided by 2, if I can just kind of barely squeeze it in there. Why don't we come back to our original diagram and label this information. So previously we discovered that the length of the pink stick is one half unit long. And we've just discovered, oh, this happened earlier. Here, one half. And the length of the red stick down here is root three over two. All right. And since cosine of 30 degrees and sine of 30 degrees represent those values, we can tie this all together and say that the coordinates of this point must be uh, cosine of 30 degrees, which is root 3 over 2, comma, sine of 30 degrees, which is 1 half, All right, so we've got the ordered pair describes point P. Kind of tying this all together one last time, since the cosine value is the horizontal coordinate and that value turns out to be root 3 over 2, we can conclude that the cosine of 30 degrees equals root 3 over 2. Similarly, since the sine of 30 degrees is the y coordinate, and since we've discovered that this y coordinate is 1 half, the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. And with that, we have now discovered the sine and cosine values for 30 degrees.